So when you think about, think about satellite data, go back to Doppler weather radar. What's that, 30 years old now? What did we have? Three products with Doppler weather radar, right? Three products, velocity, reflectivity, spectrum width. We had a dual pole, we had six products. We're still doing new development from three products with Doppler weather radar and six products with dual pole radar. Think about what we're getting with GOES-R. GOES-R is 16 different radiances and all these level two products. We've got decades worth of research and new product development that is on the table as we go forward over the next couple of decades. So the amount of data, the things you're gonna see is just unbelievable. So I'm gonna go back and talk about what we're doing for broadcast television. So first thing is, is Barron is ingesting the full suite of Gozar products at our Barron facility. So taking the full suite of the 16 radiances and the level two products available from the, from the government at our facility in Huntsville. Our plan is, first thing to do, is to productize the advanced baseline imager data, the cloud and moisture imagery. Satellite imagery that we're used to seeing already is the first goal, is get the cloud and moisture imagery. Create various infrared and visible products. And we're not talking about just one infrared or just one visible product. There's gonna be multiples of each because of all the different radiances available. So it's just not throwing up a visible satellite anymore. There's gonna be multiple variations of that depending on the weather. Multiple infrared images are going to be available. So we've taken a little different approach than, than the, the weather company has. We've looked at certain compression and decompression techniques so that we can send the information directly to the customer. And that's what we're doing here. So we'll have in our first release here, the productized cloud moisture, full disk, that's the 15 minute update imagery. We're gonna provide that in both the native resolution and a downscaled resolution. The reason we're doing the downscaled is if you're creating a scene with 30, 30 images in that scene, you wanna play that live, try to do that with the native resolution. It would be very difficult. So the downscaled is for the live interaction. Full CONUS, that's available every five minutes. We're gonna provide that both native and downscaled as well. And then CONUS subregions. We're gonna have several different CONUS subregions at the highest resolution available. So if you don't want the whole country at one time, you can get one of these CONUS subregions. And then we'll also provide the mesoscale data at one minute updates in the native resolution. So our goal is to be ready to go with this when the government makes this operational. It's not truly operational, it's the 88 days after launch that we hope to have this data available to us to start delivering. So what we've done is we've got some experience with this. We actually, back in 2012, when the government made the super rapid scan available, we talked to the government and asked if we could have access to that. And we started providing that during Hurricane Sandy. So as soon as that was made available, we had that in our system that weekend during Hurricane Sandy. And we've continued to deliver that data during these individual uh, periods of time when this goes 14, uh, high temporal resolution data is available. This is actually of uh, Hurricane Danny in August of 2015, and it was available two or three times during the last summer. So we built some experience being able to take this data, package this data, and deliver this to customers. This is exactly what it would look like in a customer system. So this was driven in our Omni system at the time, but it will be in our link system going forward. So we've already built some expertise actually dealing with this data. So our phase two rollout, we've talked about the cloud moisture imagery, the base products that are available. The next is to deal with the level two products. We've looked at the available level two products that are gonna be made available immediately and prioritize those to look at adding these that I have on the list first. So a fire product, fire and smoke product, a sea surface temperature product. We mentioned the snow cover product already. There's a rainfall rate product and a volcanic ash product. So we will productize these and deliver these to customers as our phase two release. And we'll provide this in full disc CONUS, sub CONUS, and also the mesoscale regions if they're available. So that's the phase two. This again will be delivered directly to customers. So we've talked about the global lightning mapper. I think Steve did a great job talking about this. I do wanna note though that this is not the same as the strike by strike lightning services that you already have in your system. And I'm not a lightning provider, so I'm not uh, uh, giving a pitch for lightning providers, but it's not the same. It's a supplement to those. So when you think about the differences, the strike-by-strike strike that you have in your system now 
It's on the order of meters. The accuracy is on the order of meters. What did Steve tell us? The, ac or the, uh, the resolution of the uh, GLM is eight kilometers. So it's completely different, completely different. It's a supplement, I believe, to the existing lightning services. The advantage it gives us, it gives us the information at the cloud that you don't see with the traditional ground-based lightning sensor services. So what we're going to do with this data is we're going to supplement this um, with the, uh, the satellite imagery. So the first thing we're going to do is build this into a visualization so you can actually see the, the amplitude of the lightning activity. And then also, we're going to illuminate the satellite imagery and illuminate radar data with this available GLM data so that you can combine this with satellite and with radar information to see the GLM data. But again, it's a supplement to the lightning data you already have is, is the way this should look. And my understanding on this, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the GLM is not operational and not available until about next summer. Um, can anybody, does anybody confirm that or deny that? GLM data availability, is it next summer? It's like launch plus six months or something? Okay, 160 days, yeah, yeah. Correct, yeah. Okay, so that's why we've made it our phase three planning for next summer sometime to have this data available to us. And then looking beyond that, so things that we can now do with this satellite data. This is, uh, this is where Barron has been particularly successful, is building products that provide value to you and your operations. So uh, beyond what's available from the ABI or the level two is building fog detection products, blended visible and infrared imagery. That way you don't have to switch back and forth between the two um, during the daylight transition periods. Building satellite masks to improve the imagery. Everyone has always complained about IR and seeing cold air within the IR. We're going to have the capability to build masks to, to mask out the cold air because of the different radiances we receive. So again, this data will send directly to customers and it will be available in several different domains from full disk all the way down to the mesoscale regions. And then as we look forward, this is out probably a year or two from now but the ability to create value-added products from the available image from the available imagery and the data so building products that take into account the stability indices products that deal with hurricane intensity so satellite imagery now is not just looking at a picture it is data that you can actually build new products out of and then data fusion the ability to create new products based on radar model data and uh, satellite data. So one of the things we've already been working on is looking at the GLM data and the lightning jump activity that's available from the GLM and all these different lightning arrays and adding it to our barren tornado index to improve the indexing of a storm whether it's going to produce a tornado or not. And then improving our severe weather markers with the lightning data. So it gives us more than we had with just radar data. Combining that with the satellite and the lightning information allows us to improve these products that we've already been delivering for years. I believe that is it. Hopefully that gives you some insight into where we're heading with this GOES-R, but again, this is just the tip of the iceberg, I believe. Uh, we'll be dealing with and building products for, from GOES-R for decades, in my opinion, based on the experience we've seen with weather radars at this point in time. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this point. This may, this may be a question, it might be a clarification, uh, Eric Guerrero, WMBC. Um, when you talked about the lightning data, I think it's kind of apples and oranges, actually, because you're talking about discrete lightning strikes. Correct. The GLM is a storm scale lightning density product. Correct. Okay. Yes, it is. It's, it's, you're illuminating that eight kilometer box based on how much storm activity is going on there. That's why I say it's a supplement to that. It's not the same. It's, it's, it's complement. Yes, it's a complement to that. Yes. It's the end of the day. I guess there it is. Anybody have any questions as well for Pat? Because one of, one of the things I was thinking is I could give Pat a microphone and have Pat and Bob 
stand up front if there were any other questions. Um, I, I had one, but if, that, if I'm the last one, then we, can, uh, we don't have to do that and we can finish up. I know you're all probably pretty tired. I, I must congratulate all of you, though, for, for staying here and being so involved and interested and the online audience as well. Uh, it's, it's a long workshop. Uh, you're all going to get certificates, by the way. So um, those of you who left, <laughs> so uh, the <laughs> no, <laughs> Danny's back. Uh, the question that I had, Bob, is I know I I think like when I think of uh, a Baron, I've been out of the business for a long time for from television, but I've always thought of you as sort of like innovative within the geospatial uh, area and evolving geospatial type of capabilities. Are you doing the same with GOES-R data? Are you, are you taking, um, are you taking a, an approach that everything is going to be geospatial and you'll, you'll work under that premise? Or is it really taking imagery and you know, mapping it over the maps and all that stuff? I guess my real question is, does ge geospatial capability slow down the processing of a system? Or does it, is it, does it make no difference? No, that's, I don't believe it makes any difference. That's done in the background. To us, this is data. It's not imagery. So there is data embedded within that imagery that we're able to use and apply that in geospatial environments. So yeah. that's done in the background, and then all the visualization is done in the platform. Sure. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? Okay.